Today we're diving into something you see every day, but probably don't think much about. How humans decide where to live and how they group together. Sounds boring? Well, it's actually pretty cool when you start looking at the patterns people make when they start settling down. Let's kick things off by talking about three big patterns you'll find around the world. Linear, scattered, and clustered. First up, linear patterns. Imagine a line, like one you draw in a race. Linear patterns in human settlements happen when people live in a straight line, usually along a natural feature. Think of the Nile River in Egypt. People have been lining up along that river for thousands of years. Why? Because rivers mean water, and water means life. It's the same story with other places where roads or railways become the backbone for towns, all neatly lined up like beads on a string. People build their homes, shops, and farms along these lines because they want to stay connected to that vital resource, whether it's water, transportation, or trade routes. Now let's look at scattered patterns. Picture this, you're flying over the prairies in Canada, and you look down. What do you see? A bunch of farms spread out, each sitting on its own big chunk of land. That's a scattered settlement pattern. It's like a sprinkle of houses and farms, all spaced out with lots of land in between. Why do people live like this? It usually happens in places where land is cheap and folks need a lot of space, like farmers growing crops or raising animals. They don't need to be close to each other because they're self-sufficient on their land. It's a bit like living on your own private island, just on land and without the tropical beaches. Lastly, we've got clustered patterns. Now, think of a city, let's say New York, Tokyo, or London. These places are the definition of clustered settlements. You've got millions of people packed into a relatively small area with buildings, roads, and infrastructure all crammed together. Why do cities cluster like this? It's all about opportunity. Cities are where the jobs, education, and social life are. Plus, with limited space, you've got to build up, not out. So everything gets more concentrated. People want to be close to all the action whether it's work, entertainment, or the services they need. So, in cities, you'll see homes stacked on top of each other in skyscrapers, with everything from schools to shops to parks squeezed into every available space. It's the ultimate example of humans clustering together for convenience, community, and connection. But wait, there's more. These patterns aren't just local. They play out on a global scale too. If we zoom out and look at the world map, you'll see that some areas are packed with people, like the big cities in India or China. These are high density areas where the population is clustered together. Then there are places like the Sahara Desert where you'd be hard pressed to find a neighbor for miles, scattered or even isolated populations. These patterns don't just happen by accident. They're shaped by a bunch of factors like geography, climate, and history. Rivers, mountains, deserts, and even the weather play a huge role in deciding where people can and want to live. And as humans have developed new technology, like cars, trains, and the internet, these patterns can change. We can now live farther apart, but still stay connected. Or we can pack into mega cities where millions of people live together in a super cluster. So next time you're out and about, take a look around and see if you can spot these patterns in action. Whether you're driving along a road lined with houses, passing by farms spread out over miles, or walking through a tightly packed city, you're seeing the results of thousands of years of human decisions about where and how to live. That's it for today's geography lesson. Keep your eyes peeled for those patterns, and remember, there's a lot more to the places we live than meets the eye.